What's up YouTube? My name is Lita and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about um, what cards belong in the mid-range hunter shell, the mid-range hunter core cards. Uh, I thought that would be way more interesting than just telling you with uh, what mid-range hunter list I am playing. And uh, Because there are several. Several people are having success with it and to be honest uh, the dust kind of needs to settle down uh, because we're just into the new expansion so a lot of decks will change and not only will will mid-range hunter be m way more optimized but a lot of our opponents decks will uh, be changed and optimized as well so uh, rather than just uh, uh, explaining what mid-range hunter list I am playing I thought well let's do a video out about what I believe are the core cards in mid-range hunter at the m this moment so mid-range hunter wants to get a hold of the board uh, in on the early turns like turn 1 to 3 maybe 1 to uh, 4 uh, and then at the right time it wants to switch to an aggressive approach where you use the board you build to go face and do some damage control on their board and make favorable trades and start chipping in your hero power and uh, yeah win that way um, so you want to have the right amount of speed you need the, the right amount of drops to get your early uh, board control going um, uh, so that's why I believe Alley Cat is definitely core. It summons two uh, two bodies, which is actually uh, better than Fury Bat, uh, even though Fury Bat has, has a nice death rattle. Um, there are a lot of cards that can buff Beast, etc. So you definitely want to include it. It's also a cheap Beast activator if you can kill command, etc. Um, so the next card that I believe is core is Jabot Macaw. Jabot Macaw is a new addition to Hunter uh, from Journey to Angora Crater. Um, Hunter has always had this problem where it lacks card draw. And Jabot Macaw is basically a one drop that it, it never feels bad to play at on turn one. But if you draw it late game, it immediately adds a random beast to your hand. You can play in the same turn. Um, so it's basically a one drop that's, n that's okay to draw late game. And that makes this card really good. Um, the next card that I believe is core is Kindly Grandmother, which is over here. Um, Hunter actually got quite a few interesting two drops, um, like Crackling Razor Maw and Revisor Rent. But Kindly Grandmother, I th thought a lot about this because I I don't like it, especially in aggressive lists because it needs to die first because it gets nice stats. But this two drop is always good to play. Um, the thing is with Refus or Rent and Crackling Razor Maw, I I could I would argue they are more powerful, but sometimes you won't activate them and they just suck. So Kindly Grandmother is always good to play on curve. Um, it guarantees a board even after board clear, so uh, it's just really nice. Um, Animal Companion. I believe this card is core as well. I don't think it has been core for the last expansion, but I think it is in the current expansion because we have stuff like uh, Ellie Cats and Joe McCaw. We we got a stronger early game. Um, we learn, re learn run less traps and more minions, so I believe in this situation Animal Companion is uh, a really cool addition. Um, so let's move on to Red Pack. I believe Red Pack has core as well because it's a tree drop that's always pretty good to uh, to play on curve as well, and similar like Candy and Grandmother. Um, the thing is, it's a 2 2, but it summons 2 1 1, so it's effectively 4 4 uh, for 3 mana. Uh, and Hunter has a lot of ways to get this guy's attack up with like Houndmaster, uh, Timberwolves, uh, Direwolf Alphas, and stuff like that. Uh, you'll usually run those as well, so uh, it's pretty good on curve, and you can make it even better by buffing it up. Um, so Unleash the Hounds, I kind of hate playing it, <laughs> but I believe this card is uh, is one copy of Unleash the Hound is pretty much color because you will run into a lot of uh, white decks like zoo type of decks, uh, especially with the new warlocks. Mm, I don't think 2 is core because 2 can be pretty clunky into your hand, but especially combined with Timberwolves it can be really powerful and also uh, Hunter really thrives by having the board and if you do not have the board early mm, then you might lose it to zoo type of decks uh, most and then Unleash the Hounds really punishes uh, zoo and those types of decks for going wide and really gives you kind of a comeback mechanic um, or it gives you a little additional m burst to either go for lethal or set up favorable trade. So I think one copy is core. Uh, I think running uh, two kind of depends on the meta. Um, so the next card is Houndmaster. I don't think I've run a deck without Houndmasters for the last year, honestly. 
Well, maybe stuff like Secret Hunter, but that's the exception. Uh, Houndmaster is really powerful. Uh, it, playing it without the battle cry kind of sucks, uh, but it's just not the worst. Actually, it's it it pretty sucks. But uh, a four three for four mana and buffing another by two two is just amazing. And pretty much your first three turns are about getting the board, uh, and especially with minions like Candy Grandmother and Red Pack, uh, pretty much yeah, you need to screw up to not have a beast on the board by turn 4. And if you don't have a beast on the board by turn 4, I'm not sure if any card can save you. Um, so, 2 times Houndmaster is pretty good, can set up favorable trades, it's just an amazing, solid, well-rounded card. Um, so, 2 times Savannah High Main, I believe is core to the mid-range version. Maybe you want to play the quest, maybe you want to play more Zerg, early aggression, uh, type of hunter deck, but then you're not playing a mid-range hunter deck. Uh, I believe if you're playing like mid-range and are aiming to slam down big threats from four, five, six, uh, seven, maybe two times Call of the Wild, uh, I believe Savannah so Highmane uh, is core. Um, it could have been an epic, seriously. Uh, six five for five is good, and th that rat that rattle is just insane. Um, this card used to be a game winner versus warriors. We're just gonna do effect eff effectively. Uh, with this card, um, so it, it's really good. Gives really solid stats, really solid body. Has a B stack. What more do you want? So I believe those 15 cards are core and should be included in uh, pretty much any uh, hunter deck uh, with a mid-range game plan. So let me know in the comments below if you agree on this. Uh, and so now let's talk about what more does does a mid-range hunter deck need. Um, as you can see, we only run two, uh, two drops. Uh, Midrange Hunter needs to curve out, so I believe you need about 3, 4, uh, maybe 5, depending on how conditional they are. Uh, more two drops. I believe you need one additional four drop next to Houndmaster. Uh, and I believe you need two five drops as well, uh, just to fill up the curve. Um, you usually want something with a beast tag on turn 5, especially because the Houndmasters don't have a beast tag themselves uh, as well. Um, so let's take a look at the options. Um, there are, well, let's talk about Fury Bat. Fury Bat, um, I'm just putting one in for show. Um, but Fury Bat is pretty solid, uh, really helps you. If you run like five one drops, it really pretty much guarantees you curve out and you spend your mana efficiently, uh, efficiently in the early game, which is pretty important. So I believe uh, running a one off is pretty good. Um, I just think this one drop gets outshined by Alley Cats and Joe McGalls, uh, especially since not all hun uh, hunter decks run Hunter's Mark anymore. I think this card loses uh, a lot of power. So. Um, but if, if you want more one drops, uh, definitely uh, put it in your deck. I think it's uh, a no-brainer to include if you're running the quest as well. Um, crackling Razor Maw. I think this card is absolutely absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, a three-two for two mana is pretty much okay. It's a vanilla three-two that doesn't do anything, uh, which kind of sucks. It's not strong, but it's it's, it's not a game loser uh, either. Um, and adaptive friendly beast is pretty strong. Uh, chances are you've played like an alley cat before, and you can give them poisonous or make them bigger, healthier, buff them up, give them a death rattle. Uh, I think it's pretty versatile, and this is pretty cool late game. I've been running a list with two bitter tide hydras, and when you give a bitter tide hydra <laughs> wind fury with this beast. Yeah, you'll like it. So I believe uh, Crackling Razor Maw is pr uh, pretty good inclusion. And the Revasaur Rent. I really like this one as well. It's pretty good. Um, being, uh, I mean, it looks like a 2 2, but it's basically never in a 2 2. Uh, you either give it a Divine Shield or you give it more health, or in some situations you'll give it Wind Fury or more attack. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, only the problem is it's situational and that kind of sucks because the crackling razor mall is pretty situational as well uh, I believe uh, these two being situational is the is the primary reason kindly grandmother is core uh, because kindly grandmother is always good to drop on curve and revisor and the crackler razor mall just aren't um, so talking about buffing up timber wolves a lot of people have been running them uh, kind of rediscovering what Timberwolf does if you run a lot of beasts. 
obviously we have gotten a few nice additions to uh, to our decks uh, if you have beast on the board the timberwolf is just pretty good uh, i don't want to run too many too many one drops um, yeah let's put one in whatever so another two drop I've been liking it's a direwolf alpha. I really like this as a one off um I think it's it's basically the same reason. Let's get rid of a two drop by the way. Let's get rid of a reverse or rent. I like this running as a one off because I don't think two is uh, too powerful. You basically don't want to play this naked on turn two uh it's Basically, you you don't want to play this on turn two if you don't have anything on the board. That's the big drawback. So a lot of great two drop center has are conditional, uh, and then you don't want to have too many conditional drops in your deck. And um, this kind of drops in of kind of lowers consistency of having a good two drop if you uh, on curve if you're in two of these. But it's I think it's a really powerful card. So I really enjoy running one. Um, Talking about conditional two drops, scavenging Ahina. I really like that this card sees a lot of play. It can uh, create really big threats, especially with stuff like Unleash the Hounds. Uh, it's great uh, in combination with red packs and stuff like that. Um, if you are running uh, scavenging hyenas, you probably are running rhinos as well. Um, mm, 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 then what's left? Well, some removal. Um, we got this new card uh, called Grievous Bite, and people are pretty much winning the mirror matchup uh, with this card, and they say it's pretty good against early aggression as well. Uh, I like it since we lost a uh, quick shot, of course. Um, I'm not sure if running two is a bit too clunky um, for the pur purposes of the this deck building video. I'm going to run it as a one-off uh, because I think running two can make up for some really clunky hands. Um, but it's pretty nice removal. Um, of course, there is our trusted kill command, and it's used to give you more reach, like over taunts and stuff. And but I do believe. Uh, in today's meta, we are mostly using this as a type of control spell to keep on top of things on the board. Um, so I think it's not as good as it used to in previous metas and previous expansions, um, because I find myself using it as removal more often than um, than as a finisher. Of course, sometimes you'll top deck double, uh, a second kill command and you double kill command for 10 damage for the lethal. Um, and it can happen, but it kind of depends on your game plan. If this card uh, belongs to the core, if you ask me. Uh, I think it's pretty interchangeable with stuff like Deadly Shot, I mean, maybe even a Hunter's Mark uh, at this point in the game. Um, so, obviously, you can uh, run a second copy of Unleash the Hounds as well if the meta asks for it. Uh, kind of depends on your deck. If you run two copies, you probably want uh, to run two Hyenas and two Timberwolves as well. Uh, maybe a second Direwolf and stuff like that. Um so uh we only have two four drops at the moment because only two houndmasters are core. Uh I think uh, one infested wolf goes a long way. Uh, it, it's sticky and two spiders are uh, beast tokens as well so they can be buffed. They you uh, are all kinds of activators so I think that's pretty good. Uh this patch code is pretty good as well. Kind of fits the hand buff theme a lot. Uh, uh, could be included depending on what you want to do with your deck. Uh, so far, I've been liking uh, playing uh, Infested Wolf as a one-off. Um, so we don't have any five drops yet, and we pretty much want to curve out. Uh, as you can see, our curve is probably developing pretty nicely, but we do have a camp at the five slot. Uh, I really like Rhinos. Uh, I think it's amazing if they stick to the board that often wins you the game. If you can charge a Savannah High main uh, into a big minion and it dies in... Uh, like any Death Rattle minions are really good with Tundra Rhino. Uh, Scavenging Aina is really good with Rhino. Um, I think it's really solid choice. I'm going to put two in. Uh, another notable option is the Bitter Tide Hydra, the new uh, epic card we got from Journey to Unguru Crater. Uh, it does have the drawback that it deals three damage to a hero whenever the minion takes damage, uh, but usually they deal damage with a minion that otherwise would have dealt the damage to your face anyway. 
So it's not as bad as it sounds. Um, the only note to make on this card is that you only pretty much only want to play this if you want to be the aggressor, if you want to be you know, pretty much if you want to go ham, if you want to be really aggressive, you know, which to be honest, a lot of decks want to do. Um, but I feel uh, that today's center decks can't run f uh, a lot of five drops, so I prefer the rhinos and uh, hyenas. Um, in this list, I think, but I've ran Bitter Tide Hydra uh, when it first came out, and it's really powerful. You should not forget about this card. Um, so then there are some cool tech options that some people have been running in Midrange Hunter um, lists to Legend at the moment. Uh, let's start with the Galaka Crawler. Uh, destroy Pirate and gain 1-1. One, one. This is a 2 mana 2-3 two, drop, uh, so it has defensive stats, uh, so it's likely to a little bit more likely to stick around to get buffed uh, than when it would have been in 3-2. Um, and pirate decks are starting to reappear again, and I've been running into them a lot. Um, I don't think this is worth as running as a 2-off, but yeah, let's put one in because we expect to see a lot of uh, pirate decks. Um, a lot of pirate warriors have been seen. Uh, I think the new quest rogue usually runs pirates as well. Uh, so I'm going to put this in, in as a 1-off. This is pretty much a tech slot. You can fit in a second to unleash the hounds uh, instead of this, um, or maybe a second grievous bite. Kind of depends what you need. I think it's really good to have some options to switch cards around when you are climbing to legend maybe in certain brackets you are running into certain type of decks that you need to deal with uh, having one or two tech slots can really help in that regard um, so and then there are some heavy options um, the new legendary of course Swamp King Dread now uh, for me this card has been really performing uh, well uh, the only situations that it has not worked out for me is when playing against a mage that uh, freezes it. Uh, if Swamp King Dread is hit by a Frostbolt, it won't attack any minion they play that turn. Uh, so that's kind of a counter. Um, I've been running into Murloc uh, Shamans as well with a ton of Murloc Warlords on the board, so they actually play like a 12-12 and Swamp King Dread doesn't kill it, uh, but that's pretty exceptional. Um, I like it, I'm going to put it, put it in. And uh, what's also uh, pretty good to note is that Knuckles seems to be pretty good. Uh, Knuckles, I can spell Knuckles. Knuckles. Um, I don't own it, I am actually really considering crafting this. Uh, it's a 5 drop, it's uh, pretty bound to stick around because it has 7, uh, seven health. And the thing is that since you want to gain board control in the first four turns, three, four turns on the uh, in the game. After that you want to transition into more phase and this um, is a five drop. It really fits well in the transition of having board control and going phase because this one does both and it never feels bad uh, to kill a minion with knuckles. Uh, you can buff it up. Uh, it's just really strong uh, really because it kind of does the same as um, Swamp King Dread in that it uh, really helps you to keep board control once you have it. Uh, so I like it, I consider crafting it, I've been heard a lot of success stories on running Knuckles in today's meta. So if you're running this, let me know if it works out for you in the comments below, because I would love to hear that. Um, so we have three slots left. Uh, other notable inclusions are, of course, uh, Call of the Wild. Um, mainly if you're running into slower decks, if you want to, maybe if you run into a lot of priests and decks that really go into uh, turn 15, you know. Um, and it's nice because it really snowballs the board lead you have into a lethal. Uh, so let's just put two in. Um, mm -mm -mm. So we have one slot left. Let's see, what shall we do with that one sh slot? I think... Turn 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 are pretty good right now. What shall we put in? I think we do run enough 2 drops, we do run enough 1 drops, maybe add another 3 drop. Do we have another 3 drop? That's reasonable. Maybe we could add some removal in the form of a deadly shot. Nah, let's 
run one kill command. So there you have it. Um, this is the deck I just made up, uh, really, but it, I think I really showed the process of deck building in this video. And uh, it's basically you just add the core cards and you you add certain types of 2 drops, 3 drops, 4 drops, 5 drops uh, maybe some utility in, in, in forms of kill commands, uh, unleash the hounds, just depending on what other decks you face I think that's really important to keep in mind when you're building a deck um, so definitely let me know if those tips uh, helped you out uh, let me know how's, how midrange hunter is doing for you on the ladder right now uh, I think it's great that we got some tools that um, can be uh, used again and that midrange hunter is kind of back you know uh, in the last expansion and uh, midrange hunter saw like a 2% player red because it was dead uncompetitive so um, uh, thanks so much for watching guys I hope you guys all subscribe so uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and I'll see you guys later